Hi everyone. So I have a fun watercoloring project for you today. We are going to make this Christmas scene using the Happy Snowman stamp from Gerda Steiner Design. So here is a copy of the stamp and you get a sentiment that says Merry Christmas, the little snowman, and then the little bird, um, his little friend. So I cut a piece of Arches watercolor cold pressed paper using a deckled edge die from Waffle Flower. And I am going to stamp my image with weathered wood distress ink. So this is the ink that I like to use when I'm watercoloring. And I typically will use the weathered wood color if I'm doing a scene that has cool tones mostly. And I'll use antique linen if it's more of a warm tone type scene. Um, so to start, I'm just going to lay down a base of water all around my snowman and around the area where the sky would be. I'm going to add the water in kind of ragged edges around the edges, making sure not to go all the way to that tape border because I want it to look like I want the um, sky to kind of not have a clean border, but ra rather have some raggy edges. You'll see it in a, in a second when we apply the color. And I am not using any masking fluid here on the snowman. I'm just being careful not to wet the area where any of the focal images are. So I'm going, I'm being very careful to go around them and I'm using a pointed round brush to do that. My brush is a size eight. And now I'm going to start laying in the color now that we have lots of, of water down on the page. This is, you can use either indigo or Payne's blue gray for this. I think I'm using a little bit of a mixture there and I'm just going to apply my colors to the outside perimeter and then let it bleed in towards the interior of the card panel. And the reason that I do this is because I want it to look like there's a little bit of a glow um, around the little snowman and the little bird there. And by leaving the center light, you'll get that effect. So over here on the on the edges, if I feel like they didn't um, go far out enough to the edges, I'll just kind of tap in a little bit more water in a raggedy um, a pattern just to get an even border around the edges there. And I'm just kind of dipping my tip of my paintbrush into the paint just to kind of move it around, kind of um, give it a little nudge to move around a little bit more in the areas I think it's not moving enough. Can add a little more concentrated color here just dab it in in different areas and then just let it kind of bleed to where it wants. Um, I want the area around the snowman, like the, the bottom of the snowman to be pretty dark and then I want the outside edges to be pretty dark. So I'm focusing my color there, being careful to leave that center pretty light. And then I just have a brush with some clear water here and I'm just being careful to um, get in nice and close to the edges of the images so that we don't have any like crusty looking spots where um, you just have um, you know dry paper with a little bit of color right next to it it creates those harsh lines so I was trying there to get rid of them as best I could and I'm just playing now just dipping in a little bit of this is Indian Throne Blue it's a brighter blue just to see what that'll do in a couple areas just so we have a, a couple different color tones going on here. Then I didn't like it so much, so I went back over it with some of the indigo, which is the more navy blue color. And then add a little bit of really, really light color there. That is still that um, indigo, but it's just very diluted. And now I've dried everything, and now I decided that I wanted to go over it with another coat. Usually for backgrounds, I won't do this, but because I didn't really like the, the way that the colors dried, I thought we could go back over it with a second shade. And so I'm just going over the edges with some dark color, and then I'm taking a paintbrush with some clear water, and I'm just gonna blend that into the background. So the thing about doing a background like this, it's always better to do it in just, you know, one layer if you can and the thing with watercolor is it the color kind of goes where it goes by adding the second layer it's going to look more like I deliberately placed the color um, on the uh, 
on the scene and it's going to lose less of that like kind of whimsical just nature did it quality and I'll show you an example of a snowman card where I just have one layer of background and then this one where we have two layers for the background color and you can kind of see the difference but this is always an option if you're not crazy about how your first pass went it's just I'm just telling you it's better to try to um, you know, just live with whatever you did in the first pass. Okay, so now we're going to add the snow beneath his feet and some of the shadows. So I'm just using cerulean blue here. And I'm just um, going underneath the snowman's body, putting some little squiggles um, at the bottom as well. And then I'm just going to blend them in with some clear water. And this is going to give the appearance of like some dimples in the snow and a little bit of shadow under his body just deepen up that shadow a little bit with some more of that cerulean blue and just blend it in and now we can start decorating the snowman himself so I'm gonna start with the berries so I'm just using a red shade here I think this is a, a mixture of a couple reds that I had on my palette maybe pyrrol scarlet and then a little bit of um, um, Perline maroon as well so any red shade that you like will do here just to apply a light coat to start so we're gonna also give him a red scarf so I'm applying just a light um, layer of color there leaving some white space on the top of the scarf just so that it um, gives a little interest to the image and then it'll make it look like we have some folds as we go in and add in our additional layers of color over it so you know, the general rule is for the background, you want to get it right in one layer, but then for the focal images, you're going to need two to three layers to get it to, um, you know, for the colors to really pop and for it to look somewhat realistic. So anything that we're coloring in now, it's going to have two to three layers. Okay, so for the hat, I'm going to lay down my first layer of color. He has a black top hat. So I'm using neutral tint here, which is my favorite color for black and for grays and also it works really really well for shading other colors as well um, and as I'm applying color I'm just being careful not to touch any other areas that are still wet because then the colors will bleed into one another and we'll lose some of the definition of these different pieces so as you see I'm going from the um, bottom lid or the bottom rim to the top of the top hat and then We'll go to the middle in a second and I'm going to be real careful when we get here because I don't want that top of the top hat to bleed in. So I even um, left a little bit of white space in between those two sections just to um, for it not to bleed in. That it also gives you a little bit of definition between the top of the hat and the, the side of the hat. All right. So that's looking pretty good right now for our first layer. Remember, the first layer is going to look kind of dull and flat. And the pop is really going to come when you add in your second and your third layers. Um, for the buttons, we'll color them in with black. That's some of that neutral tint. I think my um, scarf was a little wet here, so I'm just being careful not to touch the red when I'm laying down the black on those two buttons towards the top. For the handle on the broom, I'm using some burnt umber here, I think. Any, like, any brown that you like will work just laying down again like a very light flat coat for the broom I'm using some nickel azo yellow here just gonna lay down a initial coat of just that yellow this is new gamboge for the nose and even though this is the first layer I'm gonna try to be careful to create a little bit of a lighter center by just um, blending in the color with clear water and then just add in a little bit of um, definition around those little pieces of the carrot, the little like um, the little lines that come up from the bottom and then go down from the top. For the band on his top hat, we're going to use a purple shade here. This is really creator's choice. I think whatever your favorite color is would work good for the band on the little snowman. We're going to have a bluebird, so I'm using some of um, ultramarine blue here because I want them to be really, really bright and stand out against the background. And I'm just going to apply that flat coat. Now we're going to add a second coat to our broom. I'm using some sepia here, and I'm just adding strips of color so it looks like the little 
pieces of a broom, little pieces of straw that stick out. You're going to use a more concentrated form of that sepia to add the shadowing around the broom handle and then just blend it in. And then I'm taking some clear water to take some of the color away so that um, it doesn't look flat. And then I'm going to add very, very concentrated sepia um, to make some more bristles for the broom. Just really, really thin strips of color there. And then I'll use some neutral tint for the broom handle. This is just the first coat. We will apply a second coat. Since I had my blackout, I thought we could move on back over to the hat and apply our second coat. I'm focusing the color around the edges and the perimeter of the hat, and then I will just blend it in with some clear water. I really am working hard to keep that little white line just so that um, we have a little bit of definition and just interest in the hat. Maybe it's a little bit of shine coming off of it, but whatever you want to call it or think of it, it will make the overall image look less flat and more interesting. I'm going to apply some color to the middle of the hat, making sure that that center is light. And then a little bit more color to the top of the hat, just focusing around the perimeter there. And then just pulling it out just a tiny, tiny bit with some clear water. And I think that's looking good. Now we're going to move on to the scarf. So I'm using Perylene Maroon here, and I'm just going to add the shading. for That little piece of the scarf that hangs beneath the first little wing of the scarf or piece of the scarf, whatever you want to call it. And then we're going to add our shading to the top. I'm going to go around the top of the neck area and then outline the bottom of the neck area and then add in a couple of lines to make it look like there are folds in the fabric. And then I'm just going to pull it out very, very gently with some clear water, being careful to, um, you know, leave the integrity of that white little line that we have there so that it, it looks like there's a fold and a little bit of that the image isn't flat. You can add a little shading to the top of our scarf, just focusing around the outer three edges and then pulling it in towards the center. taking away some of the paint so that the center piece of that scarf looks lighter. And that's what makes your your images look not flat when you have just different um, variations of the color all along like one piece of an item, right? For the nose, we're going to add some more shading. And I just focus the shading on the nose just around the little, um, little lines in the carrot, the little... Um, horizontal lines, I guess I go across the carriage. Gonna add a little dot of color onto the berries. And then I'm gonna brighten up the color on the hat with some more red as well. It's a very, very small area. Gonna add a little shadow under the leaf with some Payne's gray. Do the same around like the little bird's butt. <laughs> and then um, underneath the hat, it's a very, very small area to work. So you just want to add the, the tiniest, tiniest bit of um, contrast there just to make them pop a little bit. And it really only took those three lines of color. For the band on the hat, I'm going to add another layer of purple. Focusing my color on the um, edges of the hat and then leaving the center of the band pretty light there. Now we're going to add some shading under on the snowman himself. So I am using some Payne's Gray here, very, very diluted. And I'm just going to add my shadow around the front of his body. Going to take some of the Cerulean Blue and um, build the shadow out a little bit more on the bottom of his body, leaving the center pretty light, leaving that one arm completely light because we want it to stand out. And then around the face, just... Um, on the back portion of the face, I'm adding very, very light um, Payne's Gray tint. Some more Payne's Gray here, like under the scarf and then under the hat. And at the bottom of the body, taking some clear water and just um, blending out that shading. Adding a little bit more shading to the bird and to his feet. And got a little drop of water there. So I just um, 
dabbed it off with a paper towel. And then we'll add a third um, layer of color to this broom just because it still looks a little flat to me. So I'm adding some more of that sepia just along the bottom, some more strands of um, the bristles of the, the brush there, of the broom there. And then finally, a little bit more black onto the, um, the area that kind of holds the broom together, like right above the handle. Can't think of what that's called. Okay, just deepening up the lines on the little carrot there. And now we can add in the little pieces that are hanging from the scarf. I'm just using black hair, neutral tint, and just tracing over the stamped image itself just to make it look like we have that little fringe on the scarf. Since I have my black out, I added a little black to the broom just to give more definition to the bristles. Now we can draw in his little face. I'm just tracing over the stamped image, the eyes, the eyebrows, and then the little coal mouth just with the very tip of my paintbrush using some neutral tint. And then I'm adding a little neutral tint right underneath the scarf there just to give deepen up the shadow. Like I said, I like using neutral tint not just to add black details, but also to um, darken shading on other colors as well. It works really well. Usually that's the last, um, the last step in my shading process is to go over some areas with a little bit of neutral tint. And then add a little more shading on the hat just to make it appear black. Just give it a little bit more interest. And at this point, I think it's looking good and we can add our snow. So you could use white gouache and just spatter it on with a paintbrush if you like. Um, for me, I, that's a little messy and I didn't wanna mess up my whole work area by having spatter everywhere. So I decided to just use my white gel pen. This is a Signo Uniball gel pen, my favorite gel pen of all. I start by adding really, really large white flakes to the background and I put my snow over the images as well so it looks like they appear in the middle of a snowstorm. Um, if you want, you can just have the snow appear behind them, but I just find it makes it look um, really, really whimsical and magical if you add the snow right over the little creatures. Forgot to draw the little bird's eyes, so I just added them quickly. And now I'm back to adding the snow. And I am just gonna keep going, adding this layer of big snowflakes, and then I will go over it and add a whole bunch of tiny little snowflakes. And I'm just gonna speed this up so you can see all the little snowflakes being added. And that's it. And now we can remove our painter's tape. And I just love the um, raggedy edges that you get from that Deckel dye from Waffle Flower Stamps. I've been using that dye a lot for my watercolor backgrounds um, since I bought it a couple weeks ago. And that is our finished card. I just love the little snowman. Or actually, this is our finished scene. We are going to add one more step and add this whole um, little scene to a card base. So I'm going to add some adhesive and then just place it right on top of a fog colored card base. Now you could pop up this panel if you like. It'd probably make it look a little bit cooler, but because I want to mail this, um, I just attached it flat to my card base. And that is it. So I hope you enjoyed this video, everyone. I hope you give this card a chance. It's a lot of fun. And um, like I said, here is that um, other version of the snowman that I made. This is the first one on the right. And that only has one layer of um, background color. And you can kind of see the difference, how it looks a little bit more natural, the way the colors flow together. Um, but in the end, it's really up to you. Um, how you want to do your backgrounds. All right, have a great day and I will see you again soon in another video.